Good morning, Faith Church. This is Pastor Rob. Let me first say that I am so glad you are all joining us for worship on this lovely morning. Let me also give you an update. As you're likely aware, our family tested positive for COVID early this past week. Fortunately, we have all only experienced minor symptoms, and it seems we've gotten past the worst of it. Department of Health has asked that we quarantine at home until February 25th, so I will touch base with you all later this week. Thank you so much for all your love, prayers, and support. We have felt very well cared for. So as you can tell, I will not be joining you on camera today, but we will still pray together and worship together. The sermon today is on the seven ingredients of faith. It was first delivered in November last year. I hope that it will be a blessing to you if it is the first or the second time that you've seen and heard it. God is with us today. Let's remember who we are, Faith Church. Our mission is to express God's love to all, invite others to know Jesus, and make faithful disciples. Let's enter into God's presence today with thanksgiving and praise.
Let's join together in prayer. God of all times and all places, be with us in this time and this place, just as you have spoken to your people through prophets and poets. We pray that we might hear the word you speak to us today. Just as you have spoken to your people through deeds and miracles, we pray that we might have the eyes to see the word you speak to us today. Just as you have called your people to act in the midst of your creation, we pray that we might have feet to walk and hands to reach out for the sake of your Son. We bring to you today the joys and the concerns of our hearts. We give you thanks for all the gifts that you have given to us. And we pray for those who are in need of healing and wholeness. We lift up one another as we go through this season of uncertainty in our lives. God, we know deep within our hearts that by the power of your loving presence, you are able to accomplish abundantly far more than we can ask or even imagine. Holy God, through the generations you have spoken to us, you have sent voices crying out in the wilderness, you have sent the words of an overjoyed new father and an expectant mother, you have sent the assurance of a condemned man on a cross, quiet in us any voice but your own, that by the power of your Spirit we might hear the words you speak to us today. Amen. The sermon today is by faith, by faith. In our Bible study on Thursdays, we've been going through the book of Genesis and this past week, we went through Genesis 12, which is the story of Abraham. And we've covered the first part of that story, and, and in it there are some tremendous insights for us. Abraham is the father of faith. You may have heard that name for him before. And so today we have a, a few scriptures. One of them is from Genesis 12. I'm going to read you a portion of what we read for Bible study this week. And uh, also, I'm going to read to you from the fourth chapter of Romans. In Romans 4, the entire chapter is devoted to the life of faith of early Christians and uh, of early followers of Christ who were Jewish. And in this chapter of Romans, the Apostle Paul shows how those that are joining this movement and becoming a follower of Jesus, they are followers of faith, the same type of faith that Abraham had long, long ago. And Abraham is the father of the Jewish people by faith and by his DNA. Uh, but Abraham's faith uh, is the type of faith he also passes on to those who were not biologically his children. And so, these children, all of us children of Abraham by faith, can uh, hear of his story and see how his faith can inspire our own. So uh, Romans 4 is a little bit long, uh, but it, it, there's just, it's just packed full of wonderful things that I think are going to be of great benefit to us 
today. So let's start with our first text, Genesis 12. I'm going to read to you this morning, both from Genesis and Romans, from the Message Bible. We've been using that for a Bible study, and I've just, there are things that have uh, just uh, come to light reading this particular version uh, that I've really enjoyed, and so we'll, we'll, I'll share that with you today. Genesis 12. God told Abram, Leave your country, your family, and your father's home for a land that I will show you. I'll make you a great nation and bless you. I'll make you famous and you'll be a blessing. I'll bless those who bless you, those who curse you I'll curse. All the families of the earth will be blessed through you. So Abram left, just as God said. Abram took his wife Sarai and his nephew Lot along with him, along with all the possessions and people they had gotten in Haran, and set out for the land of Canaan and arrived safe and sound. God appeared to Abram and said, I give this land to your children. Abram built an altar. A Abram built an altar at the place of God where God had appeared to him. May God add a blessing to the reading of this word. This is Genesis 12. Now, this is our second text. This is the text of Romans, Romans 4. And in it, we can see a little bit more as Christians how we're tied into the story of Abram being called by God, leaving to the promised land, and uh, God telling him that if he follows him by faith, he will be blessed and those around him uh, generations after him will be blessed as well. We're going to look in depth after we finish with our scriptures. So Romans 4, let's see how this ties us in as Christians. If Abraham, by what he did for God, got God to approve him, he could certainly have taken credit for it. But the story we're given is a God story not an Abraham story. What we read in scriptures is Abraham entered into what God was doing for him. And that was the turning point. He trusted God to set him right instead of trying to be right on his own. If you're a hard worker and do a good job, you deserve your pay. We don't call your wages a gift. But if you see that the job is too big for you, that it's something only God can do, and you trust Him to do it, you could never do it for yourself, no matter how hard or how long you worked, well, that, trusting in Him to do it, is what gets you set right with God, by God, Sheer gift. That famous promise God gave Abraham that he and his children would possess the earth was not given because of something Abraham did or would do. It was based on God's decision to put everything together for him, which Abraham then entered when he believed. If those who get what God gives them only get it by doing everything they're told to do and filling out all the right forms, properly signed, that eliminates personal trust completely and turns the promise into an ironclad contract. That's not a holy promise. That's a business deal. A contract drawn up by a hard-nosed lawyer with plenty of fine print only makes sure that you'll never be able to collect. But if there's no contract in the first place, simply a promise, and God's promise at that, you can't break it. This is why the fulfillment of God's promise depends entirely on trusting God in His way 
and then simply embracing Him and what He does. God's promise arrives as a pure gift. That's the only way everyone can be sure to get in on it. Those who keep the religious traditions and those who have never heard of them. For Abraham is the father of us all. He's not our racial father that's reading the story backward. He's our faith father. We call Abraham father not because he got God's attention by living like a saint, but because God made something out of Abraham when he was a nobody. Isn't that what we've read in the scriptures? God saying to Abraham, I set you up as father of many peoples. Abraham was first named father and then became a father because he dared to trust God to do what only God could do. Raise the dead to life with a word make something out of nothing. When everything was hopeless, Abraham believed anyway. Deciding to live not on the basis of what he saw that he couldn't do, but on what God said he would do. And so, he was made father of a multitude of peoples. God himself said to him, you are going to have a big family, Abraham. Abraham didn't focus on his own importance and say, it's hopeless. This hundred-year-old body could never father a child. Nor did he survey Sarah's decades of infertility and give up. He didn't tiptoe around God's promise, asking cautious, cautiously skeptical questions. He plunged into the promise and came up strong, ready for God, sure that God would make good on what he had said. That's why it said Abraham was declared fit before God by trusting God to set him right. But it's not just Abraham. It's also us. The same thing that gets said about us when we embrace and believe the one who brought Jesus to life when the conditions were equally hopeless. May God add a blessing to the reading of his word this morning. Well, I told you it would be a little bit long, but it feels like this version of Romans 4 is just begging for our attention. And I would encourage you to go back when you can. There's so much there in Romans 4 for us, for people of faith. And of all the times in our lives, in our personal lives, in the life of our church, in the life of our community, in our country, we need faith now more than we ever have. Well, we probably needed it for other times in our life too, but we're sure feeling it right here and right now. What I'd like to do uh, as we kind of think about what's here in Genesis 12 and Romans 4 is I've put together seven ingredients to live by faith. They're seven simple words. They're words that point to concepts that we see in these scriptures. And these ingredients of faith will work today. So, let's look at number one. Number one is listen. Listen. And that means listening for God's voice. The very first few words of Genesis 12 says, God told Abram. Now, if God is going to tell us something, the question is, are we listening? Can we hear the words of God? That means that we don't just spend our time in our relationship with God talking to God. None of us want to be in a relationship where someone else is simply talking to us all the time, or we're talking to them all the time. That's, that's no way to have a relationship. So we need 
to listen. And when we listen, we can hear the words that God speaks to us. So listen. Number two, leave. Right after uh, Abram listens to the voice of God, God tells him to leave his home. It says, leave your country, your family, and your father's home for a land that I will show you. Now, if you look a few verses before Genesis 12, we can see that uh, the father of Abram, who's Terah, he was already heading toward Canaan. He had already left the land of Ur, that's where they had uh, grown up. He was heading toward Canaan, and they stopped kind of halfway in the land of Haran. And that's where his father stayed and where they continued to live. He was on his way to Canaan, and then the Scripture tells us that his father died. It also tells us that his brother, uh, who was the father of Lot, his nephew, also died. So it's interesting that Abram hears the voice of God after their family's already moving in the direction of Canaan, after they have already experienced great and deep loss, that's when God speaks and says, keep moving forward. Keep moving toward this land that your father was uh, was leading toward, and this land now, I will tell you, is a land of promise. So leave your home. Keep moving. In spite of these losses, in life, leave. Number three, the third ingredient of faith is see. To see with your eyes. And what we're seeing is we're seeing God's promises. The scriptures here tell us that God appeared to Abram and said, I will give you this land. I'll give this land to your children. So Abram had already heard the voice of God to go to a land he would show him. He took all of his possessions. He took his nephew Lot and all of theirs, and they went toward the land of Canaan. And when they arrived, safe and sound, as Genesis tells us, God speaks again to Abraham and says, I give you this land. I think God wants us to see the promises that he's making for us. Now, look closely. We don't see the realization of this promise until a little bit later. Abraham doesn't see the land and just move right in. The land was occupied by the Canaanites. And we can see that it's not really until many generations later that the children of Israel leave uh, through the exodus of Egypt and finally, after another generation of their own, go into and finally possess the promised land. That was the realization much, much later. But God wanted Abraham to see what the promise was. I think that God wants to show us what His promises to us are. Not just to have some kind of a little inclination, but when we see, when we have our eyes open and the Spirit of God is speaking to us, when we see the promise, we can know that's it. That's the thing that God is promising to me. And it may or may not take place as soon as we would like. It may take some time. But if we can see that promise, that is an ingredient of our faith. Number four is accept. We have to accept God's gifts to us. Now, it's not always easy to accept gifts. The Scripture tells us, if you see that the job is too big for you and that it's something only God can do and you trust Him to do it, you could never do it for yourself no matter how hard and long you worked. Well, that turning or trusting Him to do it is what gets you right with God. By God, it's a sheer gift. God is promising us things and our first inclination because we've learned how to earn things and work hard for things can likely be, okay, God, I've seen the promise. Thanks a lot. I'm going to make it happen. That's not faith. That's earning something. That's not a gift. That's wages. 
Uh, that's a, a, a business contract, as the Scripture says here. God doesn't want to give us things that we earn. That's not what the story of faith is about. God wants to give us something beyond what we could ever earn, beyond what we could ever work for or accomplish on our own. God wants to give us something as a gift. And learning how to accept gifts and say thank you for gifts, it's not always easy. I know that uh, one of the great lessons that I've learned is to graciously accept gifts and say thank you. And oftentimes we say, oh, no, 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 I don't, I don't need that. No, thank you. And there's something inside of us that, that doesn't want to be vulnerable, that doesn't want to take something that we can't earn, that we can't pay for. And so accepting a gift, that is an important part of our faith. If you look at the words here, uh, it, it's, it's a blessing that God wants to give to us. God wants to give us a blessing as a gift. If you look at this word blessing in English, it tends to mean it's God's favor, it's God's protection. And we can say that's the gift that God wants to give to us. But if we look at the Hebrew word for blessing, the Hebrew word for blessing comes from the word to kneel. To kneel, which means we acknowledge the source of the gift. God wants to give us gifts, to give us blessings. He wants to give us favor, but He also wants us to be able to have the gift of acknowledging that He is giving us something that we could never have, earn, or work for on our own. Number five is a little, a little silly. Doubt. Now, what we're doing with this word doubt is because it seems to be the opposite of faith. How can it be an ingredient of faith? There's a little trick you can play with doubt. If in the process of, of practicing faith we find ourselves in doubt, turn it on its head. Instead of doubting what is possible, doubt the impossible. As soon as those words those thoughts, as soon as they come to you, this is not possible. Turn it into doubt. I doubt my skepticism. I doubt my rational mind. I doubt that thing in me that just can't imagine this happening. Scripture says, when everything was hopeless, that's the time to have the doubt that we're used to, when everything was hopeless, Abraham believed anyway, deciding to live not on the basis of what he saw he couldn't do, but on what God said he would do. So turn your doubt around. Doubt the impossible. There is a, a tendency that we have to, to look on that doubtful, darker side. And you're probably familiar with Winnie the Pooh and the character of Eeyore. And he's a funny character, and he's a character that a lot of times we probably can identify with because he's always seeing the dark side of things and how things are just not going to work out. So one morning, uh, Eeyore and Pooh Bear are having a conversation, and listen to these words. Good morning, Eeyore, said Pooh. Good morning, Pooh Bear, said Eeyore gloomily. If it is a good morning, which I doubt, he said. <laughs> this is the type of reaction we can often have. We can have that Eeyore response. That response to when God makes a promise, we say, I don't know. I don't know if that's going to happen. And I think oftentimes it's because we are looking at ourselves, we're looking at what we could do. So maybe it's a good thing for us to realize we can't do it. God can so let's put our faith in that and let's doubt our own skepticism. Number six, consecrate. It tells us in the scripture that Abraham built an altar at the place God had appeared to him. It's very important when we have these experiences with God, these experiences where we hear the voice of God, where we're told to leave when we're told that we have a promise that's set before us, 
it's important for us to take those moments and to consecrate them. And Abraham, when he had this experience with God, it was so powerful and so life-changing. He didn't want to forget. He didn't want to forget these words that he had heard. He didn't want to forget the response of faith that he had. So it, he built an altar, a place where he could worship God, bless God, to kneel before God, to acknowledge that he was receiving a gift that he never could have earned on his own. We can build altars of many types. This sanctuary here can be our altar. It can be a place that we have built, a space that we come back to to remember what God has done for us and what God promises for us in our lives. It can even be a child. If I, if I think of my own experience, uh, Sully and I, when Ian was born, uh, as soon as he was born, it seemed, we went through one of the most difficult transitions in life that we'd ever been through. And one of the things that kept us going, that kept us looking forward, and that we knew was going to be a blessing to us, was that we had this beautiful child. And we named him Ian. Uh, we named him because I, I studied a little genealogy and knew I had some Scottish Gaelic background. And so we named him Ian, which means John. It means God's grace. And little did we know how much meaning uh, that name and that child we carry for us. It is a place where we can be reminded, a person that can remind us that God's blessing is there, God's promises are there, and we can have faith in that type of a God. And, and an altar can be as simple as your favorite chair, a place where you have sat and and communed with God, where you have listened to the words of God, you've been inspired, maybe you've even shared tears with God. That is a sacred altar, a place of remembrance, a place you can keep coming back to and never forget this wonderful relationship that you have with God. And lastly, the seventh ingredient of faith is to share. We share these blessings of our God experience. Uh, the Bible says that uh, he, God told Abraham, I will bless you, and you will be a blessing. And you'll have many children. And little did he know they were going to be his own biological children as well as children of faith. This blessing, this gracious gift that God is giving to us, the things that we cannot imagine, these are things to be shared. They are not things for us to hold on to. They are things for us to share with those around us. And maybe that's what God is waiting for, is for us to be at a place in our lives where he knows that we will share when we receive the gift. God doesn't want to give us gifts that we can just hold on to and not share with others and just keep it for ourselves. God wants us to share these blessings with people around us. Living a life of faith is not easy, but it's in our spiritual DNA. Passed down to us from our father of faith, Abraham. The Bible tells us that Abraham decided to live not on the basis of what he saw he couldn't do, but on what God said he would do. That's the life of faith that we're called to live. Let's be thankful, especially this week, for the blessings of God, God's favor and God's protection. Let's also remember to bless God, to kneel and to remember the source of everything that we have been given. And let's remember to bless others because our faith is something that we are given to share. As we listen uh, and meditate on these words today, let's listen uh, to this song.
Let us say happy birthday this week to Bob Madden, February 22nd, Ryland Zetch, February 23rd, Diane Richards, February 25th, and Linda Godet, February 26th. Happy birthday to each and every one of you. And let us congratulate Denise and Bob Andre, whose anniversary is today. Congratulations. We love you and hope you have a wonderful day, Denise and Bob. As we leave this shared virtual space today, let's make a commitment to stay connected with one another. Let's dedicate our offerings for the mission that God has given us at Faith Church. And let's enter into this new week with God's blessing. Let's pray. Holy God, you have looked upon your people with mercy, generosity, and love. You've granted your favor to your people, offering them redemption, salvation, and wisdom. And so we offer these gifts for your hurting and broken world. May they be multiplied to do your service. May we be strengthened to do your work. God, we ask you to guide our feet, strengthen our hands, and fortify our hearts this day and forevermore. We pray in the name of the one who taught us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day and a great week. I look forward to seeing you again soon. Take care.